All right, everybody, this is a quick review on the Rebel Star Destroyer kit that just got released. I think it was on the 21st or 22nd, whatever. Uh, just got it in the mail today because our local hobby shops didn't have it. Uh, it was only $30 on Amazon. Uh, Prime got it in two days. Uh, I kind of laid it out here for you guys. Uh, if you've been keeping track of my channel, uh, I've built the old MPC kit over there and it really took me six months of detailing and I probably spent $200 plus just to get it accurate enough to look okay uh, where for $30 I mean I'm gonna say it this is the best Star Destroyer kit on the market period um, for the money you know if you want to spend a bunch of money on Randy Cooper's or that Japanese version of the Star Destroyer you could go ahead and drop you know, four to six hundred dollars on one of those, but uh, I'm not willing to do that at this point. But uh, just real quick, it's a little bit longer than the MPC version, just by a tad, maybe a quarter inch. Okay, uh, I installed the display landing gear that comes equipped on this, you know, and there's some sizable gaps there, and then you have the uh, ports that are dug out on the bottom uh, for this sound light box thing that they supplied with the kit, which I'm probably not going to use. Um, I mean, it, it looks okay on camera, but the LEDs are pretty weak and the sounds are its just noise. It makes two different sounds. Um, but from a detail perspective, I mean, to do the amount of panel lining that they have done on this, yeah, on all the intricate little pieces. Okay, on the superstructure base on the bridge. I mean, these are things that you wouldn't be able to achieve unless you're uh, somebody like Scratchy, who I, I don't know how he does it. But the detail is pretty phenomenal. You know, again, for a, a $29 to $32 kit, you just can't beat it. Um, you know, there's some areas that are going to need to have built-up detail added on, but that's no big deal. I mean, the detail's pretty rich in general. Uh, there's quite a few things you could do to turn this into a really viable Star Destroyer kit. Uh, you know, the engines are a little soft and weak, if you ask me. Uh, here are the smaller engines. They just kind of have a cutout in the background. Um, not sure what's going on there. They have these little uh, blue inserts down here for the main engines. That was like a LED diffuser, which worked pretty good. But I'm going to see how they work with a higher powered LED. Um, you know, and then you have the uh, radar dish. Not radar, the shield generators, which aren't bad, but, you know, it's solid. They come in halves. You stick them together, put them on top. But all in all, um, when I get this together, when I drill uh, all the fiber optic holes, oh, here's the piece I have over here. I don't know why it's over here. Um, this is very good. I think it's one of the high points of the model. It would be very easy to drill out uh, holes down in there uh, to light the, the main docking bay on, on the underneath side of the Star Destroyer. And it, it looks pretty good, in my opinion. Um, in conjunction with, sorry about the camera work guys, but in conjunction with the uh, the main one, I mean it's it's going to look pretty darn solid. Just a little bit effort. I'm sure there's going to be some light blocking issues and stuff like that, but this is a very solid little kit. Now. When it comes to the uh, trench walls on the side, just pushing it together real quick, they're very thin. Uh, whether or not that's uh, a little um, less than accurate, meaning a little thinner than normal, I think it looks cool. So, you know, I'll let the pros decide whether or not that's good, bad, or indifferent. But, um, you know, the trench wall detail isn't bad. It's not super rich, but uh, it's good enough to uh, hide some LED holes in there, and it should turn out to be a really good kit. So, once again, 
stay tuned. This is project number four. Thank you.